welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Ann Helbig, and today we have such a fun guest. I'm talking to Austin Kasabian, a.k.a. AK is his name. He's a 20-year-old rapper, singer, music producer, fellow New Jerseyan, whoop, whoop. And uh, he's got some really great stories. His voice is so cool. I'm really into his music and he's up and coming. I think you guys will love him. He also has a ridiculous story because of course, being from New Jersey, he worked in an Italian restaurant delivering pizza. And uh, one time he delivered some meatballs and got some extra meatballs as a tip. You'll hear all about it on this episode of Not Too Deep with AK. No, not, not too deep. Are you tired of unpredictable hair color results? I bet you are. Discover Color & Co, the home hair color personalized just for you by L'Oreal. With Color & Co, you'll get a free consultation with an expert hairstylist who will custom blend a salon quality shade for your hair needs. No matter your hair color goal, you can do it and use the promo code GRACE at colorandco.com for $10 off your first order. <laughs> AK, thank you for being here. What up? Um, how did AK become AK? How did uh, how did you settle on the initials? Actually, it happened with my my Xbox gamer tag. <laughs> <laughs> Like all, you yeah. know, infamous artists, their names come from their gamer tags. Yeah. It's Wait, so this was your gamer tag? <laughs> yeah. When I was in, I think it was fifth grade. Uh-huh. Uh, it was, I don't want to say it because I still use it, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, hold on to the anonymity yeah, of it a but, little bit. Yeah, it's AK-47. And then my dad had a motorcycle that was called a, some, like, a specific thing. Uh -huh. It was like a bunch of letters. Okay. So I just threw the letters at the end of AK-47. <laughs> and then like... Back then, I was playing a lot of Halo. Okay. And like, anybody that plays Halo, like, y'all know this. But, like, back then, it was, like, you made friends online. Yeah. And you would always, like, play with them. Yeah. So, like, I would have homies that I played only with, like, on Xbox. So, uh -huh. they didn't know my real name. Oh, really? So, they would just call me AK <laughs> um, instead of calling me the whole thing. And then, eventually, like, it just picked up in school. Yeah. Playing. It's a great, quick, yeah. right-to-the-point name. Right to the point, yeah. Okay, now, AK, for people that don't know... How do you explain, I like to ask a lot of people that wear many hats, you're wearing a bucket hat today, but metaphorically wear a lot of hats. Uh, what's your deal? How do you explain what you do to people? Honestly, like, I feel like it's just expression. I feel like mm -hmm. my music is very, it's, it's hip hop for sure. Yeah. But like in general, when I make music, my goal isn't to make a specific sound. Like okay. whatever I'm feeling is like what I'll portray. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm, if I'm sad, you're probably gonna hear me sing more. Yeah. But oh, like, really? If I'm like, if I'm like in my bag, like I'm feeling like I'm the man, like uh -huh. I'm gonna let you know that, and I'm gonna like, <laughs> I'm gonna rap that shit. You, I don't know. I feel like you. So can't your music's really... like a mood ring. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Like whatever I'm feeling, like my goal isn't to make a sound. My goal is to just express how I feel. Cool. I mean, I it's like that, that's a cheaper cool than therapy. Yeah. Oh no, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, how did this start? Because you're very young. You're 20? 20. You're 20. And you've been doing this. You went viral when you were 16? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's 17. 17 16, 17. Okay. So <laughs> when did you start making music? When did you start using SoundCloud and Spotify and all these things? Mm, SoundCloud was the first. Okay. Because I've heard all the like uh, tropes, stereotypes of like, people, DJs getting famous on SoundCloud. Yeah, and yeah, I always yeah. thought it was just like this joke, but no, you, you did it. It's crazy. Yeah. So tell, walk me through that. Oh, I'm allowed to curse. My bad. You're allowed oh, to cool. fucking curse as much Fuck as you yeah. fucking want. You're, Fuck you're yeah. a fellow New Jerseyan. So oh, I you, you're from Jersey. Yeah. I lived in uh, North Brunswick. I lived uh, on up, Rutgers South campus. Brunswick. Yeah. For a long time. What the fuck? I That's know. Sick. Trust Hell me. Yeah. I did my research. I know. We'll talk about fat sandwiches in a little bit. <laughs> sick. Hell yeah. Okay. So how did the SoundCloud stuff start? Um, all right. So my brother, mm -hmm. when I was in eighth grade mm -hmm. or seventh, eighth grade, whatever. Okay. My brother had like a group with his friends and they all rapped. Okay. And and they all rapped. All of them rapped. Okay. It was like, it was like four or five of them. They uh -huh. called themselves this. <laughs> yeah. Out them. <laughs> they called them. <laughs> Drag them. Tell me. He's going to hate me for this. They call themselves the newbies. The newbies? The newbies. Yeah. The newbies. Yeah. So it's like the rap version of new kids on the block. <laughs> I guess so. Okay. I mean, I'm, yo, Toddy, she's throwing shots, bro. <laughs> no, I respect it. I can't rap. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, it's so funny. Because, like, they didn't really, like, take it serious, like, okay. for real. And this is an older brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he was in, 
I think he was a senior mm-hmm. and he left to go visit one of his friends in college. Okay. And, but he left the microphone and the laptop in his room. He left it behind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like after all this time of me asking him like, yo, let me help on a song with you guys. He was like, no, like you got to prove yourself first. Like you got to like <laughs> prove yourselves to get into the, to the newbies or whatever. Yeah. So I was like, all right, bet. So he left, left the laptop and mic in his room. I took it into mine and then recorded something. And then when he came back, I played it for him. And then really, that's, kind of, that's how, I, that was the first thing I ever did. Like that's how it started. Wow. Yeah. And so you got his approval. Did he enjoy it? Oh yeah. No, nah, he, he was surprised. He was like, this is like, <laughs> you actually are flowing. Uh-huh. Like you have a flow and what you're saying makes sense. Like he was pretty shook, especially cause I was um, what, like five years younger than him. Yeah, so like wow. it was cool for him. But like, since then he kind of like veered away from it mm-hmm. and just left me with a mic and laptop right at my fingertips. So I just kept doing it. Wow. Uh, and so you're doing it. And then did you know that SoundCloud was like a, the place that everyone was sharing all of their like original music? No, at the time okay. I didn't. It okay. was actually somebody from in my school mm-hmm. found out that like I rapped because I like I would rap in like the lunchroom and shit. I was that kid. <laughs> yeah, like, I, would yeah. rap in the, I would rap on the bus. I would rap in the lunchroom. Like, Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I remember um, I was in school. I was walking to the bathroom or some shit and mm-hmm. some kid came up to me and was like, yo, uh, I heard you rap. I was like, yeah. And he was like, what's your SoundCloud? And I was like... I was like, what's a SoundCloud? Like, yeah, what, yeah. what is that? And then he explained it to me. I was like, oh, shit. So then then I that night is when I started posting on SoundCloud. Wow. Yeah. And nuts. then I don't see, I don't know how SoundCloud works in that way. So you post it and then you promote it and you're just hoping that people come and listen. Yeah. I mean, it's very similar to YouTube, I guess. Mm-hmm. Except not videos. Right, right, right. You kind of just like, you share the link with your friends and post it on your Instagram, Twitter or whatever. Gotcha. Yeah. And then what was the turning point? Like you did a remix, right? That went huge. Oh yeah. So the turning point of, okay. Um, the Panda remix. Mm-hmm. So my best friend, Mike, mm-hmm. he told me, yo, you got to take this Panda remix that was only on SoundCloud. And he was like, yo, you got to put this on another platform. Okay. Cause like at the time I was, I was 16 still. And it was our, it was junior year. Okay. It was junior year, end of junior year of high school. And he was like, yo, you're the only 16-year-old that remixed Panda like this. Like, it's it's wild what you did to it being so young because yeah. everybody was remixing it. Yeah. And, damn, that song was really huge. Um, and he he told me to take a video of, like, either me doing a one take, like, walking on the street mm-hmm. or just, like, right behind my microphone in, in my room. So I was like, all right, fuck it. Like, I'll do it. And then I did it. And then I put it on YouTube. I actually put it on YouTube on my 17th birthday. On your actual birthday? On my 17th birthday, oh, July 18th. That's yeah. cool. And then it didn't do shit for like <laughs> six months. <laughs> it didn't do anything. I know. That's YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, you- seriously. Like it like would get like three to 10 views a day for like six months. <laughs> and it's months. just you sitting and refreshing it to see if people I, w- I like was, yeah, it. like <laughs> I low key was like kind of upset because I was like damn like <laughs> I've like put, this is good yeah because it was the first time I ever went behind the like in front of a camera oh that you're like your face yeah is there, like yeah. and like if you watch a video like back then I like I cringe watching it but like I'm oh, like man. oh like you guys didn't believe in me whatever so yeah. like that was all like unscripted but like it still was weird for me to do because mm-hmm. I was in my bedroom staring at a camera like <laughs> I know weird. that game yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah for sure for sure <laughs> But yeah, especially for being my first time, I was like, yo, like I really put myself out there and no one gave a fuck. Yeah, it's so disappointing. <laughs> yeah. And then, but I kept doing it. And then eventually that video sat mm-hmm. by itself on my channel until November of my senior year. Okay. And that's when. What happened? It's hard to even like No, calculate. like I literally have no idea. Really? I woke up and it was at a thousand views and mm-hmm. I was like, oh shit, that's dope. Cool. Because on SoundCloud, I had songs over a thousand views. So like sure. on YouTube, it was like, all right, cool. Like. If we can get that on YouTube now, like, let's continue. Yeah. But then the next day it was 10,000. And then the next day it was 100,000. And then uh-huh. by the end of the week, it was a million. Dang. So, like, it happened so quick. Yeah. And then um, what kept me going was my brother was a big fan of, like, YouTubers and, like, mm-hmm. in general, like, people on YouTube. And he was like, yo, the only way you can continue, like, growing at this rate is to be consistent. Yeah. And like at the time I was posting a song a month on SoundCloud mm. and he was like, yo, you got to do so- you if you want to continue this momentum. Yeah. You got to keep this up like at least every two weeks. Post a, post a new remix. So like, he became basically like your social media manager immediately. Yeah. yeah <laughs> immediately. Like because he, he was just as stoked 
for me. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah, because he he always I feel like he always saw potential. Yeah, once once I played him that when he came back. <laughs> <laughs> once you yeah. proved yourself. <laughs> But the did people in your school know? Did they catch oh, wind yeah, of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that go? Um, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely cool. I mean, at the time it was like whatever, but mm -hmm. like the year after is like when I would like go visit. That was when I was like, oh shit! Like people are like asking for pictures and shit. It's oh, like, that's cool. It, it was cool. Um, friends didn't really switch up too much, like too bad. Yeah. A lot of new people tried becoming friends because of it. That's fun. Yeah, but like all the <laughs> but I was good at like. Being, good, being nice, but like, fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> a gentle fuck off is always like a very polite, yeah. like gracious fuck off. <laughs> and I have enough like emotional yeah. uh, bandwidth right now mm -hmm. with my friends. Uh, mm. So then from there to now you just finished a headlining tour, right? Yeah. Okay. Nuts. And this is in the span of how many years from that? Like the, from the video? Yeah. A year and a half? Wow, okay. Almost. Two? So with your brother's guidance, did you actually start uploading like regularly? Oh, wait, sorry. From the video, three years. Three from years. From me signing my management. A year and, and a half. half. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then with your brother's guidance, do you start uploading regularly now? Now it's quality over quantity for me. Yeah. So I've been putting a lot more because everything's, I'm independent. So everything's still out of pocket. Mm, okay. So I have to, I have to make sure that I'm saving where I can. And right, right, right. Putting that all my money towards putting it right back. Wow. Into the craft. So like, I have a lot of cool shit on the way mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to announce any of it yet because <laughs> I don't know exactly when it's going to be done, but it's going to sure. be done soon. Okay. But it's something I've never done before and people have been waiting a very long time for it. Cool. So, very yeah. exciting. It, it's going to be so crazy. People okay. are going to lose their shit. How, something you can talk about. How was tour? You tour did was wild. 13 cities? 13 or 14? Yeah. 13, 14? Like okay. That, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, it was wild. And that was your first tour? First tour ever. Yeah. Yeah. What take us what were some of the highlights? Mm, the highlights. Definitely like just fucking around at the hotels and shit was fun. Yeah, yeah. Like those were always fun. But uh for the most part, uh the shows were just so crazy. Like really like cause when I was when I'd be done with the show, I'd mm -hmm. be in the I'd be in the green room and I'd just be thinking like like I, I'll always think like, damn, that just happened. Yeah. Cause when I get on stage and then I get off, it feels like it was like 10 minutes. Right. But really it was 45. Right. But like in the moment I've like through the each show, I like knew I got more comfortable doing mm -hmm. what I was doing. And by the end it was like, I was, I was so excited that we had fi like finished that. Yeah. Just because like, I could check that off. Like, I just went on tour. Like, what the fuck? That's so cool. Yeah, so trippy. Were there any, what were the weirdest moments? The weirdest moments. <sighs> were there any weird fan moments? There was a couple, yeah, there was a couple people that like followed. Oh, a little that bit. Like, yeah. <laughs> like physically followed you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. But like, it, it was, it was whatever. I was nice to them. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I understand what level I'm at right now. Sure. So like, I'll take any, Time I can like, to like follow say what's me. up. Come on in. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but like, I, it was in uh, f I forget which city, but we were in, we were loading in, uh -huh. and I guess fans were there early, and they went around back to where we were uh -huh. to watch us load in, <laughs> and like they kept yelling at me, like uh -huh. yelling like AK AK, and I was like, I had to ignore them for the yeah. time being because I had to load everything in because yeah. it wasn't a huge crew, sure. so I have to like I have to put the merch out and shit and help yeah. with all that, but like. I came back out and they weren't there no more, but I was trying to say what's up to them. So if they're watching this, my bad. <laughs> he wasn't trying to be a bitch. He just had work to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could next time just invite them to help you load in. And then <laughs> hey, you. That's, that's smart. There you Fuck go. It. Then you don't have to do as, uh, as much as you, as you were. Yeah. Um, do you want to do another tour? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Would you tour with someone else? Oh yeah. yeah. Who, yeah. who are like your ideal, like collaborators that you would love to work with like touring wise or like work with either like make a song with go on tour with get some lunch with dang if i had to work with anybody j cole okay i know that's a long shot right now <laughs> say j. Cole. it manifest yeah, nah, it nah, for sure for sure put j. it into cole, the universe j cole post malone kendrick of course mm -hmm. um i love young thug i think young thug is fucking great yeah yeah 
that I mean, I think all of this can happen. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it will. I'm, I'm excited. There you the future's go. bright. Very bright. <laughs> but let's talk about your past for a second. Um, you were a delivery driver for an Italian restaurant. <laughs> That is that yeah. are you still currently employed there? No, nah, no. Nah. Okay. But I go there all the time still. I go there all the time. <laughs> Can you say what place it is? Uh Giuseppe's. Oh, Shout that's out Giuseppe's. very Italian. <laughs> yeah. Giuseppe's in How Dayton. long did you work there? So my first job uh -huh. was at another spot in my town, okay. Delizia. Um, and I was answering phones for like seven bucks an hour. Okay. And I would I literally worked. Answering phones for for like answering the phones, taking orders, and like putting oh, them in the oh, system. For a so that I, I yeah, yeah, it same, was just same a phone thing. Company. My bad. Yeah, You're no, just no, like, no. Hi, I should have explained. Do you that. need yeah, company? Yeah. I'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it, yeah, it was another pizza shop. Okay, and then I would just answer, uh, take orders or whatever. And then once I turned sixteen and got my permit, uh -huh. my brother was working at the other pizza shop, okay. delivering. Okay. So they didn't have anybody answering phones like all of the people that already worked there did. Sure. So they were like, yo, let's just hire this kid who will only do that. And then we could just focus on making the pizzas. So then that's what I did there. You are really helping your brother out constantly. <laughs> What's your brother doing now? Because I feel uh, like that's what you're going to be doing next in yeah. like a year. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yo, my brother, right now, my brother just, uh, he finished uh, he finished college okay. last year or something like that. Congratulations, your brother. Yeah, shout out Todd. Um <laughs> Yeah, he's doing numbers for a company right now, but he's got he's got bigger ideas, bigger goals that he's working towards. So gotcha. I'm excited for him. Okay, so you started answering phones. Yep. Then do you start delivering pizzas? I deliver pizzas once I get my license. I got promoted. Were there any weird pizza delivery experiences? I mean, this is how like 90% of pornos start. <laughs> but I'm wondering if there are any alternative Yo, weird... Yo, actually, yes. Tell Holy us all about shit. it. <laughs> Yo, all right. So it was it was an order and it was literally... The dude ordered three meatballs. Just <laughs> three meatballs. <laughs> so I this swear. is already a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I was I, my heart was pounding walking up to this door. It's something. It's like that is technically harmless, but that is terrifying. Yeah, at the exactly. Same time. He ordered. He ordered three meatballs and an orange Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, this guy could potentially try harming me right now. Yeah. So I walk up to the door. I walk up to the door, and it was the most awkward moment of my life oh no I, I i i ring the doorbell like two minutes passes by he comes to the door opens the door this dude is butt ass naked <laughs> wait the guy that ordered only the, three meatballs and an orange fanta yep. showed up to the door butt naked but the fuck naked <laughs> and i didn't know what to do i was just like yeah. i like looked away and handed him the receipt so he could sign it because it was a credit card. So I didn't have to like exchange wow. cash or whatever. I was just like, yo. You don't know where that cash has been. I didn't even want Thank it. Thank God. I was like, yo, keep the tip. I don't want it. <laughs> Here's a tip. Put some clothes on. <laughs> yeah, right. My exactly. God. That yeah. is. Um, that was the weirdest pizza story of my life. Wow. For sure. I mean, I literally have a question that was, did anyone ever answer the door naked when you were delivering <laughs> food? And so it turns out, yeah. Yeah. Good job, Jersey. <laughs> keeping it fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to take one quick break. When we get back, I have a bunch more questions for oh, you show. and about what's coming up. So we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Today, we have support from Shoe Dazzle. If you want to embellish your go-to outfits and stable pieces with a new pair of shoes without breaking the bank, you got to check out Shoe Dazzle. Every month, they debut a new selection of exclusive and brand name shoes, handbags, and more. All you got to do is take a quick style quiz, and then you'll get your own custom online showroom with items based on your own personal style. You can shop there, or you can browse the site freely to find the perfect style for you. It's for every person, whether your style is classic, edgy, feminine, glam, etc., etc. You can check out as a guest or become a VIP and get 30 to 50% off regular prices, plus free shipping on orders over $39. I love Shoe Dazzle. Like I said, I, uh, well, I haven't said this. You guys can infer this by now. I wear the same pair of shoes over and over and over, and it's because I'm nervous about investing in things that I may or may not like or that I may eventually ruin, and Shoe Dazzle gives me the freedom to look for really fun pieces without actually, you know, 
spending more than I should, knowing my limitations as a glam goddess. You can get your first Shoe Dazzle style for as low as $10 as a VIP at shoedazzle.com slash grace. That's 75% off your first item at shoedazzle.com slash grace. Also, get free shipping on orders over $39, and there's no commitment when you purchase your first order. Make sure you enter your email address when you take the style quiz to get exclusive discounts and the inside scoop about new collections. Again, go to shoedazzle.com slash grace, S-H-O-E-D-A-Z-Z-L-E dot com slash G-R-A-C-E. Terms and conditions apply. Not, not too deep. Today we have support from Haverdash. It's the newest and most affordable online wear and return rental subscription for everyday clothing. You have the clothes you have, the staples of your wardrobe you've invested in, and then there are the clothes that add a dash of color, print, fashion, or trend to your wardrobe. These are the pieces that you rent with Haverdash. Get it? Have or dash? Have that? You get it. Fall in love with getting dressed again with an endless rotation of clothes. You simply fill out your virtual closet with everything you want to wear, have fun with new trends, experiment with things you would normally shy away from buying, get three items shipped at a time, and then wear them once or as often as you want, send back all three items to get your next shipment of three, and swap out your items for new ones as often as you want per month. If you fall in love with something, you can buy it for a discounted price. Get all of this for just $59 a month. Check it out, guys. What have you got to lose? Head over to haverdash.com and sign up today. There are no commitments and you can cancel anytime. That's haverdash, H-A-V-E-R-D-A-S-H.com. Okay, we are back with AK, who has seen it all. (laughs) Um, What's it like to self-produce your tracks? That was the something that I've done for the first time recently. Yeah, because Ignorance is Bliss, yeah. the, the newest song, I guess, that you've released mm-hmm. as of when we're recording this podcast yeah. is entirely <clears throat> self-produced by you, right? Yeah. What's that process like? I mean, is it harder to not have anyone to like collaborate with? Uh, see, like... In or a, is it nicer to have just creative freedom? It's cool to have creative freedom, but at the same time, when you don't know as much as you'd like... Mm, mm-hmm. You kind of wish there was just somebody there not saying anything, but like if you have a question, you could just ask real quick. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and I have a couple of homies that are like that, that I know for sure. Like if I hit them up, I was like, yo, if we do a session, I'm gonna try to do everything, but like you can stick around and like, <laughs> help me out if I, need, if I have any questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just provide some sort of like um, yeah, some insight, perspective. A help. Yeah, but that was it was it's such a simple beat mm-hmm. but i just felt like the vibe was there so i didn't want to add too much to it yeah but um yeah it was so trippy cuz like i played the the first two chords i was like oh that works like mm-hmm. that makes sense cuz i don't know how to read music <clears throat> oh really you know i don't know any of that i okay. got kicked out of my music theory class in high school <laughs> <laughs> why cuz you didn't cuz i didn't know how to read music and she said that that was like something that we had to know a to take the, yeah <laughs> And like, I was like, what does that even, like, aren't I here to learn that? Yeah, like, yeah, whatever. yeah. whatever, but. Look at you now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, I just played the first two chords. I'm pretty sure it's a C minor and G minor. Mm-hmm. And I was like, word, that's lit. Like, that works. Yeah. So then I just kind of ran with just the same, uh, those two chords is literally oh, cool. the whole thing. One's low octave, one's a high octave. Wow. Yeah, I just put some drums on it and then wrote a hook and then. You make like, it sound so easy. I know well, it's I mean, not it this d- easy. It really <laughs> didn't take. It didn't take as long as you'd probably think. Really? Just because, like, I, I guess it was just one of those nights where, like, I really was into it. Everything was clicking. Yeah, everything was clicking. It was very simple. It was yeah. just everything was smooth. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, okay. How powerful did you feel when you first purchased some Apple AirPods? Apple AirPods. I, you know, I'm gonna keep it real. Yeah. I never bought a pair of Apple AirPods. Me either. Yeah, My, actually, I still have. I'm pretty sure I walked in with wired ones somewhere. With wired ones? Yeah, I'm somewhere. sure they're tangled up somewhere. Yeah, I think they're in my backpack. Here. Yeah, same. <laughs> Mine are. I at I, the bottom. Yeah, it's literally just like the most stressful looking <laughs> pile of cord that I yeah. don't know why I haven't invested in AirPods. I have tiny little baby ears, so I feel like they're gonna <laughs> fall out all yeah. the time. Um, okay, what was the first physical album that you purchased? Do you remember? It was finally famous by Big Sean. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How old were you? Shit. It was... It was either sixth or seventh grade. 
But oh. it was it was when I first got my iPod. Mm-hmm. So I bought it on iTunes. Gotcha. So it wasn't like the physical copy. Right, right, right. But once I, because before I didn't, before I had an iPod, I wasn't allowed to listen to like anything with too bad cursing because I really? had no device to listen to oh, it on. Oh, yeah. So everything was just whatever my mom was playing in the car. What are your, what is your, what do your parents think about your music now? They love it. My really? mom's my biggest fan. In the really? World. Yeah. Oh, so that's my dad. so sweet. Yeah. Did they come to any shows? My mom went to, Dallas. She's been to Dallas with me. Uh huh. She's been to LA. Mm -hmm. She's been to Orlando, Jacksonville, Washington D.C., Atlanta. Wow. Yeah, she's been all over with me. I don't want to alarm you, but I think your mom's stalking you. (laughs) (laughs) Be careful. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. But I'm, I'm, (laughs) I'm excited. That's very sweet. Yeah, like, cause I could tell it's love. Like she really, she really like. She's really proud. She's encouraging you. Yeah. That's all. I mean, that could go the complete other way. So that's 100%, awesome. 100%. Exactly. That's super cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's the last thing you hate watched? Do you ever hate watch anything? Hate watch. I never even heard that term. Um, It's a, it's a term basically when you watch something and you know you don't like it, but you watch it just to kind of get pissed off at it. Hmm. Maybe you're Give too Give me young. an example of something. Hmm. Like, okay. Like what would somebody hate watch? I... I can't, well, I used to hate watch Bachelor in Paradise because it's ridiculous. Oh, but now like I genuinely shit. love okay. it. All right, all right. <laughs> um, so it's basically something you watch and you're like, why the fuck am I watching yeah, this? Yeah, like this is insane, but I can't stop looking at it. The other day I was in the house and Toddlers and Tiaras was on. Yeah, I bet it was. Yo, <laughs> yo, it goes down on that show. It goes crazy. Yeah. People, they're insane. Talk I about felt so bad for some, these little children. Yeah. Talk about curious mothering. Oh my <laughs> that God. Is, uh, that's, it's so crazy. I hope, I hope all that's fake. But like, I have a feeling that it's like, so, not really. Yeah. I think it's, uh, I think that one's kind of pretty real. Yeah. That shit extent. is crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I, w- I saw that. It was just on. I'm proud of I, you for watching that yeah. oddly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw it. I saw it on, and I was just sitting down. I had nothing else to do. Yeah. So I just sat on the couch and watched it. And then four episodes later, I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm still sitting here, <laughs> just as interested as yeah. I was when I yeah. first sat down." It's like watching a car accident. It's really hard to not look at yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. What do you watch that you genuinely love? Oh, I love watching Chris D'Elia, his podcast. Oh yeah, he's great. Oh, that fucking guy's hilarious. Mm-hmm. I saw him live twice. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I took me and me, and my dad. And a couple of my homies, we went to see him in New York when oh, I was nice. back home before. And then me and my manager saw him at the Laughing Factory. Or the cool. Laugh Factory, whatever it's called. Very cool. Yeah. He's actually from Jersey, too. Yeah, I know. Clear. I always say his last name wrong, but he's very, very, very funny. Yeah. Um, what's the weirdest thing you've looked up on Wikipedia? Hmm. I saw you looked up your own net worth the other day. Oh. <laughs> How funny is that shit? Wait, for people that don't know, tell them what you found. All right, yeah. So <laughs> I'm worth 135 mil. <laughs> I'm going to just say that. According to yeah, according to the like, professionals that yeah, make the statistics like, for these I websites. I laugh so hard because like, <gasps> all right, so I was it was super late yeah. and like I was so tired, but like I just didn't feel like sleeping. Sure. So I was just I was just on my phone and I was like looking up like, "Oh, who's what's this person's net worth? Yeah. What's this person?" I was like, let me look up mine, see if it's even up yet. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't expect to see anything. Right. So like I see, I see it says Austin Kasabian's net worth according to Forbes and this and that. And I'm like reading through, I'm like, oh my God, wait, I'm about to find it. So uh-huh. I keep scrolling and then it just says one, three, five <laughs> mil. And I'm like, I I start dying of laughter. Like, that's, cause it was the last thing I expected to see. That's so yeah. bonkers. I mean, did they confuse like your like audio listens with the amount of do they think you get a dollar for every <laughs> listen that you get on like SoundCloud oh and God. Spotify? I literally was like, yo, somebody had to have put that. <laughs> like somebody had to Someone have typed t- that in <laughs> and said, Yep. <laughs> that's his an- net worth. <laughs> yeah. No need to double check. Yeah. Uh, and then I looked I sure. looked up like post Malone's and I was like, All right, yeah. What's so, his? Oh shit. I think it's like I think it's like 16 mil. Six, so you have uh, <laughs> yeah. like four times, five times as much as Post Malone. Yeah. I mean, oh that's God. obvious. That's it's- so funny. 
<laughs> that is so, yeah, I, I would like to meet the people that actually are responsible for posting for that. that. It's also just kind of like irresponsible because your fans can go up and look at that and think that you're this fucking yeah. giant millionaire <laughs> yeah. just walking around trying to be humble. Yeah, it's so nuts. Oh, that's so bonkers. Um, do you look up dumb things online a lot like that? Um, usually when I'm extremely bored. Yeah. Like I'll just look up like some random shit. <laughs> I watch a lot of like, like, um, oh, what is that show? You ever see the hunt on Netflix? I don't think so. No. It's wild. What is that? It's all about like animals and like the predators versus the prey. Oh, okay. And it's like, so it's like a nature show. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, it's trippy because <laughs> they get, they get really good shots and it's oh, like yeah. so wild to like watch that shit. Yeah. Like if you ever watch planet earth. Yep. And those kind of things that will freak your brain out. Yeah. I still don't believe it's all real. I still think some of it's CGI and that they are trying to prank us, but that's just me. I'll save that for another podcast. Uh, what's the dumbest thing that you believed as a kid for way too long? All right. So for the longest time <laughs> okay. when I was a kid, right? Uh -huh. I always thought that like, all right. So like when you get to be like an adult, yes, I thought it was like you got to a certain age and then it was like, you're an adult now. And then everything is like different. Like the whole world is different. <laughs> like you go through an, uh, like a, a doorway and then all of a sudden everything. No, nah, is... no. Nah, like for real. I thought it was like, <laughs> you almost like sign a contract to say like, all right, I'm an adult now. Yeah. And then you put the contract away, wake up the next day. And it's like, you're ready to like. It's like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Job, all like, of a sudden everything's in color. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and your closet's just full of suits and briefcases for some yeah, reason. No, like I thought like that was how life worked. <laughs> and then I realized that, yeah, no, nah, that's It doesn't work that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically I'm still like an adult child. I've yeah, never. No, I feel the same way. Like everyone says like, oh, you're still a kid. And I'm like, yeah, I am. But like I do adult things. So like I yeah. feel like, like when I'm older, I feel like I'm still going to be. Still going to be rapping. Yeah, totally. And also you're thrust into this world that like most people your age don't get to experience. So you have to adapt yeah, and like understand how it all works. Mm -hmm. So that grows you up. That matures you. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember the smallest crowd that you've ever performed for? My smallest crowd. I think it was. Might have been Jacksonville. Yeah. Or Orlando, Jacksonville or Orlando. I think it was like 45. 50. Really? Yeah. It was, but that's cool. It was yeah, no, it was cool. It was definitely dope because I, like I treat every crowd like it's 20,000. Yeah. People. Like I, I love performing. Mm -hmm. That's like one of my like main things I love about like my whole job. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> I don't know. I just feel like when it's a smaller crowd, you, I could literally, I meet, I can meet everybody after the show mm -hmm. much easier than th some of the other shows yeah and you can have a more intimate experience exactly with them. like i don't know there's just something about the smaller shows that i really fuck with yeah yeah That's like i think even when i outgrow these venues i think it'll be dope to like go back and like drop in and do tiny shows yeah, here and there like i feel like that would be so sick that'll give you so much street cred too people <laughs> will be like he's just like us he cares about <laughs> us nah but i just i just feel like that would be so dope to like if I like eventually I want to be able to do thousands. Yeah. But like what was your biggest show? My biggest show I ever did mm -hmm. that was my show mm -hmm. was five hundred. That's amazing. Yeah. That's super cool. That was back in Jersey. 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 They showed up. Asbury Park. Asbury Park. Oh yeah. 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 That's on tour, awesome. the biggest show was Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland was nuts. Could you tell the differences in crowds from the different areas of Holy the U.S.? Holy shit, yes. Really? 100%. What was like one of the major differences you saw? The people south, uh -huh. like Texas, they go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Cleveland went crazy. Uh huh. I noticed, I felt like when I was in New York and mm -hmm. L.A., like the entertainment cities, yeah. I felt like those were very like, people were afraid to like, yeah, let loose. Go fucking nuts. Yeah. yeah. Like people were more of like like sitting there watching and like observing. Observing rather than just like, yo, I'm at an AK show. Like, let me just go crazy. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I've seen that a lot in LA too. Yeah. It's hard. And it, that's only usually in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I'll call people out. I'll call people out on it. I'll be like, yo, get the fuck. Like, <laughs> yeah, no one I, is safe. Yeah, yeah. I've taken somebody on stage with me. Oh, yeah. Because they weren't like they weren't getting lit and I had an extra <laughs> mic. On the on the stage with me, so I was like, "Yo, you like? Do you know this song?" And uh -huh. he was like, "Yeah." So I brought him up, and oh, I was like, well, "Let's great. do it." 
great. Yeah. And then the rest of the show, he's going fucking nuts. So let that be a warning to anyone that comes to your future shows yeah, is they have to show up. Yeah. Or Majority of the time they do. But if they don't, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure. <laughs> You'll you make sure yeah. things happen. Yeah. Um, do you care about sports? I do, but like I don't at the same time. Okay. I do you have like a team or anyone that you particularly root for? I root for my homies. My 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 friend uh, Dante Strickland. Mm-hmm. He just got drafted to the Cardinals. He's cool. on the Arizona Cardinals. I saw him play in his first game, preseason game, the other week. Very cool. Yeah, it was super dope. So I'm rooting for him over in the AZ. Cool. Uh, another one of my friends, Mo Sanu. He plays on the um, Falcons. Cool. Yeah. Your friends seem fun. They're cool. They're yeah. doing really cool stuff. Yeah. They're actually both. They're both of them are from South Brunswick. They're really? Both from my, yeah. They're oh, both from that's my awesome. Yeah, yeah. South Brunswick is producing all of these athletes and artists. Yo, it's insane. It's, it's actually nuts how many athletes come out of South Brunswick. Well, I know like through the Rutgers like football program and yeah. all of that, that that's mm-hmm. like pretty intense for all of them. Yeah. Um. Okay. Do do you what's your airplane routine since you're traveling so much? My airplane routine. Do you have like a travel routine? Are there things that you have to bring with you? Are there things that you you know not to do? Wow, yeah. There there is some things. Um all right. So I always got a neck pillow. You have a neck pillow. Always always I have to. <laughs> I, Cause I I get so much anxiety before flights. Really? Yeah, like oh. real bad. And I like I'll I'll do a red eye. Mm-hmm. I'll stay up the whole night before. So you'll fall asleep. So then, and then I like, I'll force myself to stay awake all day. And then at the red, like when I have my flight, I'm like so exhausted. There's no way I'm not sleeping. (laughs) So then I have to have the neck pillow on. Um, My backpack always. Yeah. Um, My sister got me a, my sister got me a teddy bear like two years ago. Aww. Because I was going to be like traveling and stuff. Uh Uh-huh. So, and she like told me she wanted me to bring it or whatever. So I was like, all right, bet. Like, so now I take that. Everywhere. That's real sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's some low-key shit nobody know about. Yeah. <laughs> so if you if people run into you on a plane, you're going to be wearing a neck pillow holding a teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> I usually leave it in my backpack. I usually leave it in my backpack. <laughs> but yeah, I usually have the teddy bear in my backpack. Oh, that's very, very sweet. Um, okay, do you celebrate your birthday? Yeah. Do you go big for your birthday? Uh, not really. Usually, uh, all right, so this was, my birthday just passed like this July and I was home for it. Okay. Last year I wasn't, so I, I was here. And mm-hmm. I didn't really do much. I just kicked it at okay. my manager's house. But um, this year, what do we do? I don't really think we did much. I just kicked it with my homies back at the crib, and then. And next year's your twenty first birthday. Yeah, so that I'm trying to. Do you already have plans for that? Not yet. Not but yet. I'm gonna start them soon. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I think I'm the last to turn twenty one. Of your friends. Of like my friends, yeah. Oh man, yeah, that'll so. be very exciting. And who knows where you're gonna be. By the time your twenty first birthday saying. comes around, mm-hmm. that's gonna be nuts. Um, do you remember the first YouTube channel you subscribed to? See, I never knew what subscribing to a channel was until I had my own. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, I would just always search who I wanted to watch. Yeah, no, same. It took me like seven years before I realized <laughs> that I should subscribe to my friends that are on YouTube. I was like, oh, that's, that's what this button's for. I just look them up yeah, and like I watch their just, videos. I always used to look it up. But um, damn, I'm. I think the first one was Big Dolls TV. I don't even know who that is. He's from Arizona. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's dope. Um, he just does like pranks that I thought were hilarious at the time. Yeah. He still is wild. He's nuts. I've seen, I've been with him while he films. Oh no. Yeah, no, nah, he's just super like, he doesn't care what people think about him. Oh, those which people is like, are dangerous. They're dangerous, <laughs> but they're so dope. Like yeah, I yeah. like, I took so much from seeing him do that. Like he had a speaker with him uh-huh. and he would play like old, old music, like super old music. And uh-huh. we were on the like ASU. Like from the 90s? No. <laughs> way before that like he was playing like old old like shit like Motown stuff yeah and then he would he, he was just on the ASU campus uh-huh. and just like with the boombox over his shoulder playing these <laughs> songs just dancing in the middle of the fucking walkway while oh see that's time. fun like yeah nah he's a fun like I don't give a fuck what you think yeah anymore. pranks make me anxious because I hate when people are uncomfortable but that kind of stuff is fun and harmless oh yeah for sure that's yeah, great yeah. who do you do you watch YouTube now yeah who do, who's your go-to that you watch now? Shit. Probably David Dobrik. Yeah. Yeah, his videos are just hilarious. I don't know when he sleeps, if he sleeps. Nah, how I respect sleeps. the fuck out of him, too. Yeah, he works his ass off. Yeah, and he's a genius. Very genius. smart. Very smart. Yeah. Very, very... Uh, in. He's got a lot of innovation in what he does. Yeah. It's very cool. Um, 
Who was the last person you texted before you went to bed last night? My sister. Oh. Yeah, because I was supposed to FaceTime her last night. Oh. And then she was like, oh, it's too late because she's back in Jersey. So you have like a good relationship with your siblings. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, for wow. sure, for sure. I should call my brother. <laughs> you just reminded me. <laughs> Glad I, I should, you. Yeah, I yeah. should talk to them. Uh, that's on me. Okay, we're going to take one last break. When we get back, the internet has a bunch of questions that you got to answer for them because they are very uppity about it. Let's get it. We'll be right back with AK on Not Too Deep after this. If there is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling can help. They offer licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues like depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBTQ matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. Get help at your own time and at your own pace. Anything you share is completely confidential and it's so convenient you can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. You can text with your therapist. Amazing. And if for some reason you're not happy with the counselor, you can request a new one anytime for no additional charge. It is truly an affordable option and Best of all, you beautiful listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code GRACE. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash grace. Then you fill out a questionnaire so that they can help assess your needs and match you with a counselor that you will love. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash grace. Okay, okay. before we get to these Twitter questions, I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every single guest that is on the podcast. Hit me. And the first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Yep, you can take it in. As someone that's worked in an Italian restaurant, <laughs> so I feel like this is going to be an important alive. question for you. Who I want to throw cold spaghetti at? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I know. My second grade teacher. Your second <laughs> Okay. Yeah. For, for why? She was just real mean. Oh. She was real mean. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really like her too much. Well, okay. And this would be a harmless prank. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. like I, I could get in there, exactly. Chuck some spaghetti, get out of there. Yeah. I'm out. And then maybe she'll be nicer for it. Maybe it'll be the wake up call exactly. she needs. Exactly. Uh okay. The other question is to tell us your worst pant shitting story. Or, Pant shitting story. Yeah, or close call, but you can only use three words or small phrases. So mine, for example, is college jogging front lawn. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it was not Damn. funny at the time. Oh, okay. Um, shit, I was... Oh, wait, no, I got to keep it short. I yeah, can't three the words story. or like small phrases. Okay, okay, okay. Whatever okay. paints the picture. All right. <laughs> Family vacation. Okay. <laughs> Whitewater rafting. Oh, no. And just being scared, I guess. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was like, oh, no. Damn, how old was I? I don't even remember how old I was. It wasn't recent. Okay. It was like, either way, Whitewater rafting. I think I was rafting. 11 or Oof. 12. Whitewater rafting is dangerous. I mean, it's just like you're in one giant toilet the whole time. So. <laughs> nah, it was it was honestly, even though I'm not supposed to describe sure. what happened, but it was like, it was at a time, like I didn't feel good okay. the whole day. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, it was at a time where we were like able to jump out of the raft and uh -huh. like, it was like calm water. Uh -huh. So I jumped out of the raft and I was just like, gotta do it, <laughs> like, gotta do it. You're in nature. Yeah, it's the nah. most natural thing yeah. ever. So gross. So fucking nasty. But like oh my 12 year old self was like, dude, you got to do it. You, you I mean, got to do it. What else are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, and it brought your family closer together, I'm sure. Oh, my God. My my, my family thought it was so funny. <laughs> they still talk about it. They still talk about That's it. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into these Twitter questions. Um, someone's to know. Someone says, I love you. And when's the next concert in L.A.? Mm, well, I love you too. Wait a minute. Is her IG OG Delilah? Yeah. Yeah. Delilah Giselle. Word. Hell yeah. 
Good um, job. Yeah, no, I'm I didn't I didn't see that last night, but I seen she tweets at me all the time asking like when I'm going doing a show in LA. Oh cool. Yeah, so I see you. But do um, you have any other show dates lined up across the US or international or anything? My agent is working on that right now. Cool. Yeah, we might uh we might try to do a part two of the No Rest mm. tour. But that'll be I mean, obviously it won't be called the No Rest Tour. But, sure. Um yeah, cool. we're trying to get something something in the works. So just stay following AK yeah, on all yeah, social yeah. platforms and you'll know exactly when yeah. any dates get announced. Yeah. Um, there's so many questions about, is there an album coming this year? Ah. Um, and you can evade this question if you don't want to give a specific yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to just say I'm working. Working. I'm working. Things are happening. Gears are yeah. in motion. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Very cool. Very ominous. Mm -hmm. Which basically means yes, because that wasn't a no. <laughs> <So> <laughs> but you don't know when. Yeah, That's yeah. exciting. Okay. This question was interesting to me. Um, B5SOS says, coming from someone who has never heard of you until now, what would you most like to be known for? If you're a musician, what song or... Uh, if you're a musician, what song or what wouldn't you like to be known for that you are? This is a very weirdly worded question. Basically, what do I want to be known what for? What do you want to be world? known for? Yeah. If someone did, who is just discovering you, what path would you put them on? What would you show them to like show the best like version of you to them? Yeah. Like I feel like my goal, the way I want to be viewed or mm -hmm. the way I want people to know me for or mm -hmm. what I want people to know me for is just like, I guess just to remind them to be themselves because that's mm. something I, I I mean, I still struggle with it sometimes, but I've gotten much better with just like who gives a shit like what yeah. people think, like just be yourself. Well, that's what, see, I didn't really know much about you until the last couple of weeks. And yeah. uh, that's what I really thought was so cool about you is that you wear whatever you want. You, your videos are like very beautiful, very artistic. Thank your you. voice is rad. It's I like appreciate that. you can do all different styles of rapping and singing, which a lot of people cannot do. Uh, and your tone has just like a, a more mature tone to it. Like it sounds, you Thank sound you. way older than 20 years old. Appreciate it. Um, so it's not like this fluff, like bullshit kind of like easily produced stuff. I feel that. What is there a song that you would recommend to people to listen to first if they're discovering you for the first time that you think like represents what you're doing? Um, damn, I would probably say if I had to say the first song, like I got it for sure. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that song is just very, it's a very statement song. Cool, yeah, and very it's very, cool. it's very hype. I feel like it's a, an attention catcher. Very cool. Yeah. Um, okay, Josephine Kidd wants to know what's his favorite thing about being an artist? Connecting with people. Yeah? Yeah, because that's something I used to I used to struggle with a lot, like in school. Mm -hmm. Because I never would like like I had friends and like I was <clears throat> I wouldn't say I was popular, sure. but like a lot of kids knew me. I knew a lot of kids, but like I had a very small group of friends that I'd like hang out with outside of school. But I feel like I always was I was always in my head. Like I was Mm. always mad and secure, like always overthinking and like trying to be like the perfect person for right. towards everyone. Yeah. And like, I would kind of forget about my own happiness mm -hmm. by doing that. And then eventually, like, I feel like that kind of kept me from connecting with a lot of people that I could have. Mm. If I had just remembered to just be myself and not give a fuck. Yeah. Do you get it? You must get a lot of messages from people that resonate and relate with you that are like, thank exactly. you for being yourself. You're giving me permission to be myself. Exactly. And that's when I'm like, because I didn't really have that when I was mm -hmm. struggling with that. So now that I'm a vessel for other people to be like, yo, like, just be yourself. Like, that's the sickest shit ever. That not it cool to be rewarded so for dope. just being you? <laughs> exactly. After all this time, like, struggling. Yeah. Thinking of, like, people aren't going to fuck with me if I'm being me, you know? But that's awesome. Um, because then your music becomes more personal. It becomes a way for you to actually, like, express all of the sure. dialogue that happens inside your head yeah, constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, people are asking when are more shows happen happening, album dropping. Very soon. Shows are very soon. Shows are soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Tyler Mickelson wants to know, what's your songwriting process? Do you journal or do you write down like thoughts, feelings, emotions? Very crazy. I just started journaling mm. on my road to finding myself. I started doing that. <laughs> Is that the name of the new album? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, but like, I feel like 
in the past like month and a half, two months, uh-huh. I've kind of just been trying to like find who I am, like on like the deepest level, like yeah. who, what I'm trying to be, who I am and like who I'm trying to be to everyone around me. And I feel like I never knew, like I always felt like everything was closing in on me mm-hmm. because I would just like get all anxious about it. So I was like, what can I do besides writing songs that could help me get all of the shit out? Yeah. Because I feel like writing songs, it's very therapeutic, but at the same time, it fucks me up because like I'll I'll have to be writing about something that I don't want to be like getting into detail about because it'll keep reminding me of like all the shit. Yeah. But I started journaling every night before I go to bed. And then that's literally changed my whole life. Really? It actually has helped me so much. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. And I'm sure that probably then by default helps your writing, songwriting process. 100%. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like I'm just always, I'm always expressing myself, but not in the same exact way every time. Right, right, right. Yeah. Are there um, topics or emotional things that have been too deep for you to tap into yet that you know you eventually want to get into in terms of like writing songs about? Not really. No? I, f- I feel like- You're an open book. For, truly for me, I feel like it's so easy to not talk about it. Mm-hmm. But once you just say it yeah. into the mic it's and it sounds good and you are happy with the way it sounds, mm-hmm. even though it's super, super deep and super personal and yeah. you don't want nobody to hear it, I don't have to watch somebody listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can just put it out and then they hear it and they're either like, oh my God, that's sick. I feel that. Or they're like, eh, fuck it. I don't really care. Like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So like for me, I don't have to sit there and watch somebody like yeah. listen to me get all open. Yeah. That's how I feel about my therapy. <laughs> I have to watch my therapist listen to me say sad things. I should just close my eyes next time I tell her things. <laughs> Uh, A lot of people want to know, uh, who is your inspiration or what is your inspiration? My inspiration right now is my family for sure. Really? Yeah. Do you have songs about family members? Oh, yeah. I talk about my mom a lot in my songs. Really? Oh, (laughs) I'm sure she loved that. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Does she rap? Will there be a (laughs) mother-son collaborative song? I mean, probably never released. Yeah. <laughs> but shit, mom, hop on the track. Like I'm down to, I'm down to have listen, that in my own my own playlist. Yeah. I will listen to the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, this question is really interesting and it's a little bit more serious. Um from no shit eight two nine three seven eight six five. Rolls off the tongue. Uh <laughs> they say he always says he wants to be the greatest, but never made it clear what is so special about him. What does he have that will make him stand out in his prime? And then they said, I really don't want some generic answer like mindset, energy, hunger. This person is very demanding. Yeah, word. They also- I fuck with it though. Yeah, their um, their handle profile picture is just a cat with the words no shit under it. So tough. real serious stuff here. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, Damn, I feel like the way I approach every song mm-hmm. and the way I approach everything that has to do with music- Yeah. I've always felt it in my heart that like there's something different and like I know that. And mm-hmm. like I used to I used to acknowledge it, but now like I own that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that changed everything. So like once I started really like honing in and focusing on owning that part of me, like knowing that there's something about me that's different. Yeah. Like everybody always talks about like oh like He's dope, but like, or not, not to me specifically, but just in general, it's like, yeah, they're cool, but like, they don't have that spark. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have that. Mm. And I feel like I, I own that because I'm, I'm proud of that. Yeah. Cause I know how uncommon it is for that. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of people that are, um, confident without the means to back it up. And then alternatively, I think there's a lot of people that are afraid of success. And so they self-sabotage in a way and they don't, um, they they don't appreciate their talents and like like you are saying like they don't give themselves permission to accept them and not feel like ashamed to like be so confident 100% and that's also something that i i i've battled with all of that before and like sure. i still do a little bit but like for the most part like i'm always i'm like even with the journaling like i constantly am keeping myself in check like yo tomorrow's going to be an even better day than today even though today was dope mm-hmm. like it's always going to continue getting better that's great and like i don't know i just feel like my 
my voice is different. I just feel like my voice is. I think you have a natural born talent and the fact that you're actually utilizing that talent in a really interesting way rather than like a generic, like I'm going to go on American Idol and like sing pop songs kind of way. Uh I think it's very cool. And you're just at the start of everything, you know, the beginning. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Um, What's your biggest pet peeve? Mm. My biggest pet peeve, white lies. White lies. Yeah. Oh. Like like little lies that like don't mean shit if you were to just say the truth. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> a waste of breath. Yeah. Uh, okay, last question. What's a question you hate being asked? And what's a question you always well, wanted to be asked? I've seen that. I've seen somebody ask that. Yeah. Um, one thing I hate to be asked, when is the new song coming? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because like I'll put out a song uh-huh. and literally like the second I post it, somebody will comment, oh, this is cool. When's the next one? I'm yeah. like, bro, I just spent four weeks <laughs> straight <laughs> yeah. trying to get that video done, yeah. get that shit mixed, mastered, like uh-huh. all that. And I Never it just dropped. Yeah. It just dropped. Crazy. But like, it's cool. They don't get all that background. Shit. Yeah, yeah. They don't get to see all the behind the scenes like that and know how much like blood, sweat, and tears go into it. Mm-hmm. What's a question that you wish you were asked more often? I don't really know. I feel like I haven't done enough interviews to like <laughs> yeah. feel, like know yet, but like, yeah, no, I, I'm not sure. Soon. Soon you'll find yeah, out. Yeah, soon, soon I'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, okay. Here's the last one. How important is it for you to stay connected with the fans and creators and the creators showing support to your success? I think it's super important. Yeah. That's like something I really try to focus on. I try I try to answer as many DMs as I can a day. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people feel offended when I don't respond to their DMs and mm-hmm. then they'll DM me. Like, they'll be like, I'll, I'll respond to somebody. Yeah. And then I won't respond again for like a couple of days or sure. like, a re- like maybe a month or two. And then, but I'll be responding to other people's DMs mm-hmm. because I, I, I connected with him. Yeah. And like, I'm trying to get to everybody. Yeah. But then, like, I'll get DMs like, oh, you don't answer your fans anymore. And I literally, this happened two days ago. And I was like, yo, dude, I'm trying. Messy. I, yeah, bro. I'm like, I know I don't have to, like, I don't have to even respond to that and be right. like, yo, and, like, explain myself. But, like, at the same time, I just want them to know, like, yo, it's like, it's That's all love. Nice I'm not, you. like, ignoring you. Like, Yeah, and your intentions are good. You don't have to respond to a DM, period. But the fact that you're even, like, venturing in that world and staying connected to your fans like that, I think, mm-hmm. is huge. Um, this has been so fun. Thank you for making time yeah, and talking lit. with us. Before you leave, every guest that makes time to be on Not Too Deep gets a personalized fortune cookie as um, a parting gift from us to you. So you can feel free to open it up and um, and read the fortune that's inside. Yeah, we don't have to. Has never happened to me before in my life. What's that? I just broke it in half and usually it's like right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Surprise. All right, what do we got here? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> What's it say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Congrats on that 135 million net worth, bro. Where the fuck my bread at? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to throw any of that to us yeah, after nah, this podcast. I got you guys. I got you We guys. will take it graciously. I got my checkbook in, with me. <laughs> Thank you. AK, where can people find you and everything that you're up to if they don't already know? Oh, uh, you can find me at I am the real AK. I A M. The real AK. Okay. Yeah. On all social media? Every single platform. Uh, on SoundCloud? The real AK. Okay. But you could just type in AK and then it'll, it'll come up. Great. Yeah. And you guys might get music. You might get an album. You might Definitely get- Definitely getting music for sure, for sure. Yeah. In the near to distant future and mm-hmm. hopefully a mom track. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. That's funny. Thank you, AK. This was so Thank fun. Thank you very much. Guys, go check Appreciate them out you. if you haven't already. It is worth your time. And Thank we'll you. see you guys next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too Not deep. deep. With Grace Helbig. Whatever struggles you're facing, depression, anxiety, trauma, grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It is so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, as well as chat and text with your therapist. Anything you share is completely confidential. And best of all, it's truly affordable and you will get 10% off your first month with the discount code GRACE. So why not get started? Go to betterhelp.com grace, fill out a questionnaire and get matched with a counselor that you'll love.
today. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, writing by Diane Kang, production assistance by Katrina Henning, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. (laughs) 